Hey guys, it's me, you slash John Wilsner. Today I'm reading Breaking Point again. This is part two. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and get started. As an announcement, we went straight to work. The first thing the counselors made us do was carry these really heavy bags, and they smelled terrible. Who knows what could have been in them. After that, we had to transport the same stuff that Rowley showed me to these trucks. I hope they die playing with them. Soon after that long day of work, we had to go to bed. At least we even had beds. Later that night, I was jolted awake. I didn't know what kind of dream I had, but I did know that it was a nightmare. I hope I get out of this place soon. Wednesday. Today, we did the same things we did yesterday. It was really boring, but one thing that caught my attention was that some kids went on the bus and left. I was really confused, so I asked some of the kids who were next to me what was going on. So one of them told me if the kids here didn't work as hard enough, the counselors will send them to slaughterhouses. I asked them if there was some way we could escape and get out of here, but he said that the only way out is running through the woods until we find civilization. But that's highly unlikely. One other kid started speaking up, and he said that there is another way out, and it's ending our lives. That idea, so I just walked away. I'm just surprised I haven't died yet. At lunch today, if you can even call it lunch, the cafeteria people served us kids this weird looking slop. I didn't even know what it was. I even heard one kid died from it. Maybe the counselors are trying to kill us. July, Tuesday. It's been a few days since I last wrote in this. I was hoping the counselors wouldn't catch me writing in this because they probably would have taken it away. I feel like I'm not going to get out of here soon. 11 o'clock p.m. I woke up last night because I heard someone walking through the cabin. I did see their silhouette, but I couldn't tell who it was. When I laid my head back down, I heard some crunch under my pillow. I plucked it out and it said this. Hey loser, meet me behind the cabin at 11.3. Roderick. Yep, that was Roderick's grammar all right. I didn't have time to stand around for three minutes, so I just got up and went around the cabin, and I saw Roderick and his van. I completely forgot about it until now. Same with Roderick. Come on, we're leaving. Once Roderick and I got in and started the engine, I asked him why he didn't do this in the first place. So he said that when he was finding a place to put his car, he accidentally drove over a kid, and it somehow messed up his car. So basically, we were stranded until he fixed it, and he did. Then, we started driving blindlessly through the woods because it was dark and we couldn't find a, a dirt or gravel road. Everything seemed like smooth sailing until Roderick ran into something that looked like a cat and the lights on Roderick's van broke. Apparently, someone heard us because we heard someone yelling behind us, so me and Roderick started running into the vast darkness. I couldn't see Roderick, but I knew he was behind me because I heard him yell, KEEP RUNNING! So I did. To be continued in part three. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Uh, that was Breaking Point part two. I'm going to record part three soon, so look out for that. Uh, that's it for the video. So you, you don't have to like and subscribe or whatever. Anyway, that's the whole video.